Hello, my name's Katie Marshall. I want to say a huge congratulations to Natalie on four wonderful years of Talking Tudors, the podcast. It's been such a pleasure to be involved with the podcast journey. First, as a listener, I've learnt so much from all of the guests that you've had on, um, all of the different takes and um, viewpoints and all the wonderful research that has been shared on the podcast. It's such a wonderful space. And then secondly, as a guest, it's been such an honour to come on twice to the podcast to discuss my area of Tudor history. And here's to many, many more years of talking Tudors. Why the Tudors continue to fascinate us is such an interesting question. I think, first of all, they're memorable. Tudor monarchs had such strong and individual personalities that continue to engage and fascinate us. I think, importantly, they also happened to be alive at a time when a new wave of artists, especially Holbein, were capturing people in almost photographic detail. So we can see for ourselves their sumptuous and theatrical clothing and interpret the symbolism involved in all of this. These portraits allow us to engage with personalities on an unparalleled scale so we can see for ourselves their features, people's tastes and sometimes even mannerisms that allow us to put faces to the stories and accounts we read of Tudor people and their lives. And on top of all this, the Tudor era sees vast amounts of, cha vast amounts of change that can sometimes be quite intimidating for us in the 21st century to comprehend but it also feels modern and close enough to us to be able to relate to people's hopes and fears. Everyone grows up knowing about some element of Tudor society, even outside the realm of history as a discipline, whether that's Shakespeare's plays, early medical theories, exploration, empire. These are just some of the impactful and often challenging legacies the Tudors have left us. And Tudor ideals are often cited as part of a national narrative of identity. Our monarch today is still head of the Church of England as a direct inheritance of Henry VIII's break with Rome, which is pretty extraordinary when you think about it. The whole era is shrouded by the Tudor propaganda machine, which is still at work today. And we can't help but be drawn into these dramatic highs and lows, both personal and political. And overall, when you studied the Tudors, the Tudor era, there are so many moments when the tide could have turned in completely the opposite direction and the dynasty simply wouldn't be remembered in the way it is today. I think all of these tenuous moments make it endlessly exciting for us that a small change could have had such a drastic impact on the Tudor dynasty. And... Most of all, when we think we've got the Tudors sussed, either if that's a person or um, a decade of the Tudors, a new piece of extraordinary evidence will resurface and we have to change everything we thought we knew. So for historians of the Tudors, the job is never done. And for people consuming this history, it just gets or even more and more exciting. And I don't think that appeal will be going away anytime soon.